One of the best things about being cook, hostess, and butler at your own dinner party is that you have to keep tasting everything. Mmm, that's a sauce vin blanc, which is going over Coquille Saint-Jacques à la Creole when we do dinner party. First course, next time on The French Chef. You know, every once in a while, I think it's rather fun to have a big formal dinner. It, it gives you a chance to show your stuff and also to use all the wedding presents you haven't given away. We're going to do dinner party first course today on The French Chef. <laughs> The French Chef is made possible by a grant from Hills Brothers Coffee Incorporated and a grant from the Polaroid Corporation. I'm usually cook, butler, and hostess whenever we give a dinner party. And right now I'm being the butler, setting the table for the hostess and polishing the glasses. We're going to have three wines. We're going to have a white wine with the fish and a red wine with the meat and champagne for dessert. You know, I don't like to use sets of glasses. I think they're rather dull. I like to have glasses that go well together but are of different types. I th somehow it's a little more interesting. The important thing is to have the right kind of a glass for the wine you're going to serve. Now this is the great all-purpose glass. If you only buy one glass, this one is the one. It's called the tulip shape, and you can see why, because the top goes in very slightly. And the reason it does that is it's so c it can hold the aroma and the bouquet of the wine in the glass, because that's one of the great pleasures of wine drinking, is to be able to swirl the glass around and sniff the wine. And if you have the top going out, then the aroma or the bouquet goes out. And this all-purpose tulip holds eight ounces. And when you fill it, you just fill it by half, because if it's, I don't think a good wine is good in a little glass. Now, for instance, here is the burgundy glass. And this is a very large glass that holds two ounces, but you notice also that the top slants in. And that's because when you're serving a red burgundy, a burgundy has un gros nez. That means that it has a, lots of aroma, so you want to have lots of room to swirl and to smell it. And you only fill it by a quarter full because if you, if you would go just about to where that heavy part is. And this one holds 16 ounces. My husband got these when we were in France, and I think they're quite fun. But you can use the all-purpose tulip instead of this great big glass. And then for champagne, we're going to use a shallow glass. And you could, if you wanted to, use uh, one of those flute-shaped glasses, which are quite high, about eight inches, and they have a hollow stem. And they're nice because you can see all the bubbles coming up through the stem, but they don't fit in my dishwasher, so I don't like them. Now, when I'm the combination hostess, butler, and cook, I only have three courses instead of four, five, six, seven, or eight. And one thing I love to serve as a first course is fish. And I have a wonderful recipe called Coquille Saint-Jacques à la Creole. And I'm going to show you how to make it. Now this is, it's a really a delicious recipe and quite an unusual one, as you see. And with it, we're going to serve a magnificent white grave called a Chateau La Ville Aubryon. And that's now in the refrigerator chilling. It should chill about, oh, two or three hours. <clears throat> and here are the scallops. This coquille Saint-Jacques à la, à la Creole is a scallop dish. And be sure for this dish that you have scallops that had a lovely fresh smell. It's just as though they came right out of the sea. That's terribly important. Now, whenever I'm doing a party and doing all the work myself, which is what I usually do, I try and plan something that I can really do well and also that will fit into my time schedule. 
because I think one of the important things in having a party is that uh, you're able to spend as much time with your guests as possible and do all of the cook heavy cooking ahead of time. And that's one reason I like this scallop dish is because I can do most of it ahead of time and just do the finishing off just before I serve it. And I've got, we're going to serve six people and I have about three cups of scallops or one and a half pounds. And that's plenty for six people as a first course. And this is going to cook in a cour bouillon. And the cour bouillon is a flavored liquid in which you cook the scallops and then you use this lovely flavored liquid to make your sauce out of. And that's, that's all that it, a cour bouillon is. Be sure when you have your scallops before you cook them that you wash them. Now here's the beginning of the cour bouillon. We want one cup of water. And then we want either one cup of white wine or three quarters of a cup of white vermouth. And I like a very a good brand of, of white, imported white French vermouth because I think that to try and find the right kind of white wine to cook with is often difficult and quite frequently very expensive. And I find that a good white vermouth is just perfect. And we also want some sliced onion, a medium sliced onion. That's a little bit bigger than medium, so I won't use quite all of it. And then that goes into the pan. And then we have some parsley stems. I always wrap parsley in wet paper towels. And you only use the stems. We've done this before, because if you use the leaves, it darkens the Bouillon. So we have about eight or ten parsley stems. And then one bay leaf. And I always use imported bay leaf because I like the flavor better. And then about four to five peppercorns. And now we become a little bit different than the usual Bouillon. We're going to add four cloves or allspice. And then two mashed garlic. And you can just have two big cloves of garlic. Don't even need to peel them and go wham and bust them up. Because all of this is going to be strained, so you don't, there's no reason for peeling the garlic. And then we're going to have either some cayenne pepper or some hot pepper sauce. I'm using the hot pepper sauce and four or five good shakes of it. Now this is, this is the the Creole flavor, and you're going to think it's going to be very strong, but it's supposed to be strong at first because after you make a sauce out of it, uh, a lot of this flavor disperses itself, and I'm going to put in about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. And then this is to come up to the simmer and then, and then be covered and is to cook very at a very slow simmer for about 20 minutes, and that's so that you can get all of the flavor out of the courbouillon. So it's just about come up to the simmer now. So put the cover on the pan and let it cook very slowly for 20 minutes. And be sure that you use a non-staining pan. Don't use, uh, don't use plain aluminum or iron because you're using wine in your courbouillon and it, unless you use stainless steel or an enamel pan, the wine turns dark for some reason. And then after you've cooked it, you want to strain it out. And here's one that has already been done. And it looks lovely, doesn't it? And this, and now, is to be strained. And then you're ready to cook the scallops in it. And just strain it all out of the pan and get all of the everything out and then press down on the vegetables to be sure to get all of the juice out of it. And I'm going to put that back in there because I was just giving you a sample cooking of it. And then this goes back into the pan 
and the scallops go in. And now these, and you'll be sure that before you put the scallops in that the cour bouillon has cooled. And the scallops are cut in about three quarter inch pieces. If you, use, if you have little small bay scallops, you don't have to cut them at all. You see the liquid has just covered the scallops. And if you've reduced it down too far, just add a little more water. And then you want to bring this up to the simmer and then let it cook at a slow boil or a fast simmer for just about five minutes. You want to be sure and not overcook these scallops because if you do, they'll toughen. And I've always put a cover on them and I'm going to let them come up to the boil and then move them to low heat. And now, along with this recipe a la créole, we're going to have a fondue de tomate, which just means tomato pulp. And this we've done a great many times, so I'll just do a sample. Now this tomato I dropped for five minutes into boiling water. I mean for ten seconds into boiling water just to loosen the skin so that the skin comes off very easily. We've done these things, these tomatoes hundreds of times, but they're used a great deal in French cooking. And you'll see these are going to be folded into the sauce afterwards and they're going to give a lovely taste and then cut it in half and squeeze out the juice and the seeds. These you could add to the cour bouillon while it was cooking and then you'd strain it out afterwards. And then these are to be cut into very fine dice. I mean very fine, it's about a quarter of an inch. And I want a, a little over a cup of them. I have some that's already made. And then we also want a bit of chopped shallot or scallion in. This is all going to add flavor. Chop those up fine. And then they're going to cook. Going to cook in some butter. So I'll put in about a tablespoon of butter, and then in go the shallots, and then in the tomatoes. Ideally, these would, these would cook just about half of a moment, and then the tomatoes would go in. I've got about a cup and a half of this tomato pulp. And the reason this is cooked first is so that you can get rid of uh, also so that you won't have raw tomatoes and, all, and so that uh, you'll have gotten rid of all the sort of tomato liquid. It should have a little bit of salt. That's probably about a quarter of a teaspoonful. And some pepper. I've got white pepper here. It doesn't make too much difference. And this will take about four to five minutes to cook and you can do them ahead of time. I'll put them on a back burner. And now we shall say that our scallops here have cooked for five minutes and are done. If they feel squashy, they aren't done. They should just have a, a, a slight resilience and that shows that they're just right. And now you want to drain them out. And then you want to reduce this scallop cooking liquid. And this is very important because this is what's going to give you the perfectly delicious sauce that you have. And this will take about 10 minutes and be sure to watch it. Here it is all reduced. You see that sort of a brown liquid. It's almost a syrup. And be very careful in the reducing of it when it gets down fairly far. It can burn quickly. I burned some the other day and I just howled with rage. I was so mad because it was perfectly delicious and then to burn it, it was that, that was just stupid. And now we come to the making of the sauce once you have your scallops cooked and your sauce reduced. And this part of the sauce you can do ahead of time. And this is going to be uh, there's several kinds. There's a simple sort of the velouté sauce, which we've done a great deal. And this is going to be a fancy, high-class sauce. And you have your cool scallop 
reduced liquid that's been reduced to about a third of a cup and then put in about a quarter of a cup of heavy cream, put in the cream first, and then four egg yolks. And then beat that up. I seem to have beaten it a little bit too fast. And then this is going to be heated. But you always want to, before you're going to heat it, you want to beat your egg yolks up a little bit. And be sure that that liquid is cool before you put the egg yolks in. And then, just as a little bit of insurance, I'm going to put in just a teaspoon of cornstarch. Or you could use potato or rice flour and a little bit more cream. And then mix this into a paste. This, this sauce is going to be a type of hollandaise. And this just little bit of cornstarch is an anti-curdling ins insurance. And then that goes into the pan. And then you heat this. Now this we've done before also. It's the same old the custard sauce business, in which you put it over direct heat, a fairly moderate heat, and you just stir it until it thickens enough to hold in the wires of the whip. And then after that, you, you, make <coughs> you beat butter into it. So it's really like a hollandaise, except it has this fish lovely reduced fish stock in it. And this is called a sauce vin blanc. You see, with this recipe, you can do this part of the sauce base first, your scallops already, and when they're cooked, you can put them in the refrigerator, and all they need is heating up. And when this sauce base is ready, that too can go into the refrigerator. And then it just has the butter beaten into it. So you can do this very quickly at the last minute. In fact, you can do this all this part in the morning. Now I'm putting it off on a slightly less warm burner. You see that? You can tell when it's beginning to thicken up because it foams. And then when the foam begins to go down, it means that the thought is almost, sauce is almost thick enough. You just want to be careful that it doesn't curdle. And what I'm doing, you see, I think some people feel they have to do all of this in a, over a double boiler, but it just takes so long. If you just keep putting it on heat and putting it off heat, you're perfectly all right. And then do this naked finger test. You put your finger in, and when it, the sauce is too hot for your finger, you know that it's just about done. The thing, and now, you see, there's a little some steam that's coming up, that also means it's almost done. But you just have to go through and beat it until it really has thickened. In fact, you have to beat it until it just about begins to curdle. See how that's a thick foam now. Let me see if that's almost done. You see that steam coming up. But if you don't get it thick enough, your sauce isn't going to be thick enough. And then still beating, take a piece of cold butter and beat that in, and that stops the cooking. But be sure to do that. And then this you can get done ahead of time and heat it gently just before you're ready. And now we have the sauce base done and the scallops all done. And our only problem is what we're going to do to garnish the platter. You can be very simple, but I think I'm going to be elaborate and use truffles and fleurons. And fleurons are uh, little puff pastry decorations. And if you have any leftover puff pastry, suppose you've made Napoleons with French puff pastry, always make a little bit of extra of it and keep it. You can freeze it perfectly well. And then when you want to make some fancy decorations, you can just roll it out. And this is going to be, should roll out to about a quarter of an inch. And then just take a fluted cutter. I'm just going to do a little sample of this. 
that's about a three inch fluted cutter. And then you see cut so that you have one oval, oval and a crescent. And then have a pastry sheet and wet the pastry sheet. And you put the florence on. And the reason you wet the pastry sheet is so that the, fleurons, the puff pastry will stick onto the sheet. And then take an egg glaze, that's one egg and a teaspoon of water beaten together. And then so that they won't puff up too much, poke them with a fork. And then as soon as you glaze them and poke them, be, bake them in a 450 degree oven for 12 to 15 minutes. And they puff up nicely like this. See, there they are. You see, they've puffed up. That's, that's what French puff pastry is and why it's so nice. And so now you have, have everything and you're ready to assemble your dish. And you have your lovely silver salver and you butter it and heat it up. And be sure, just when you come out into the kitchen to get ready to do it, you warn your husband that he should get the guests ready and to seat them in about three or four minutes. And then you have your scallops, which you reheat. And if you don't have a little bit of liquid left over in the pan, put a little bit of vermouth in and cover the pan. And you want to be very careful not to reheat them too much. It's just over gentle heat and toss them up because the beauty of the scallops is that they aren't overheated. And then you have your sauce, which is ready, and if it this is where it's, uh, this is your sauce base, and this is where you have to be quite careful. If you've refrigerated it, let it come out to room temperature, and then have your, the butter that's ready to go in, and have the butter warm, and the warm butter will heat the saw, heat the sauce base. And you can, I'm going to use uh, one, one to one and a half sticks, that's about one to three quarters cup of melted butter. And just as though you were making a hollandaise, beat it in very, very slowly and the sauce will thicken. And you cannot add the butter except really just at the last minute. I think you're safer not to. Because by adding it at the last minute, then you reheat the sauce because your butter is warm. And as always, one of these hollandaise sauces is served, never served hot. It's served warm because it was served too hot it, it would thin out. And as you note, the butter is going in very, sort of just in little dollops, and the sauce is gradually thickening up. You see that's thickened into a, into a nice cream there. And then you want to be sure that you taste it very carefully. I think this was, if this it seems a little bit too, if it seems a little too thin, beat in some cold butter rather than some melted butter. See that immediately because the butter is cool that immediately thickens it up a little bit. And then be sure to taste it very very carefully that is really the most important part of cooking is taste taste taste. Oh the good. I just love I think this is one of the most lovely sauce and you'd never know that you had that special Creole flavoring in. I think this could also use a little bit of lemon because that, that cuts the butter. As usual in my impeccable towel, I squeeze the lemon in. And now you are ready to fold in the tomatoes. You see they've cooked now so almost all of the liquid is out and the tomatoes just get folded into the sauce. And now the scallops which have heated up are now ready to go on to the silver salver. And you, you butter the salver first so that the scallops won't stick to it. And be sure that you take them out with a spoon so that you don't have sauce you don't have the juice on 
on your plate. And then the sauce just gets folded in. And then we have the decoration of of the fleurons, and to heat the fleurons, uh, after you've made them, you can freeze them perfectly well. And when you want to, and when you want to reheat them, put them in a 350 degree oven, and then immediately turn the oven off. And then they can't possibly be burned; they'll just heat through, because you want to have them warm and crisp and delicious. Yeah, that really makes a very pretty little decoration. You always see these in great restaurants and fine houses. And once you made your puff paste, puff pastry, they're just wonderful things to have. And then if you want a little more decoration besides that, you can put on some parsley or some chopped truffle. I think the little black accent is very nice. Of course, that raises the expense, but then we're not trying to have a budget dinner this time. I think that is, that is very handsome looking. And be sure that as soon as it's ready, you serve it immediately. Now, we served this Coquille Saint-Jacques a la Creole at a dinner party the other night. And I just love to see you, to have you see how it looked when the cook made her grand entrance as the hostess. This makes a lovely first course. It smells so good as it comes into the dining room. The truffle decorations give it such an elegance. And with the fleurons of puff pastry, you don't need to serve any bread. And I found a, a new smell There's our bottle of chilled Aubignon, that great wine standing on the table, as white wines always do. The host pours a little wine into his glass first. In case there's a piece of cork, he gets it, and not one of the guests. And each glass is filled only by half, so that everyone can swirl the wine about and smell it. There's even a special way to hold the bottle. You grasp it with your index finger on the top, and that gives you perfect control. And when you've poured a glass, you roll the bottle so the last drop stays on the lip. That's to protect the tablecloth. There, index finger on top, glass only half full, and that roll of the bottle keeps the last drop of wine on the lip. And have a napkin handy, just in case. Oh, I think this scallop dish is really a great beginning. And I'm happy to say everyone seems to agree with the cook. Now, as for the cook, she thinks this is the most delicious fish dish she ever made. But after such a beginning, the great question is, what to serve next? That's all for today on The French Chef. This is Julia Child. Bon appétit. The French Chef has been made possible by a grant from the Polaroid Corporation and a grant from Hills Brothers Coffee Incorporated. Julia Child is co-author of the book, Mastering the Art of French Cooking.